Hey there, this is Mark at alchemist.camp where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. This time we're going to cover two things. One is the response to the last episode, which was about caching database requests with ETS, aka Erlang Term Storage, which is an in-memory store kind of like Redis, except it runs inside your VM. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to cover how to use gen servers to do work repeatedly. So you could have some task that you want to do every 30 seconds or every 10 minutes or once a day. And again, you don't need to use an external tool like cron because the Erlang virtual machine and by extension Elixir can handle that very well without any sort of external tool. So let's go over the feedback first. Uh, it's pretty straightforward what I did. I've got many episodes on the site that look like this or like this. And there are also some episode listing pages that are like this, and they load up all the episodes from the database. And there are a fair number now, as well as some associated tags and some other metadata. Neither of these were super slow before, but I was just kind of curious to see if I could get a bit more performance out of my super cheap DigitalOcean server, so a $5 a month server. And setting up this this in-memory cache did improve things uh, before this kind of page depending on which page but this specific page uh, was able to handle about 150 requests a second and in contrast the home page which has an image but isn't really doing much with the database can handle 1200 requests a second after some tuning that i did two episodes ago but after using the in-memory cache, this got uh, a bit more than a third better so that it could handle 200 requests a second and the listing page got up to 275 requests a second. Uh, probably the limiting factor on these pages is that it's, it's set up like a, a CMS so it's not loading all of this from an EEX template. Instead, all of the content is in a database and I'm actually passing all of this through a markdown converter in line so every time one of these is loaded this all goes through a markdown converter so this will turn into a list and these will be bolded and on top of that i've got some of my own extensions like uh, this time 023 you see here or time 355 in the episode those will show up as links that go to that time in the appropriate youtube video and it got the youtube video link out of the episode so there is a fair amount of processing going on every time here. It's not, you know, just like a static page. And I think getting to 200 requests a second for this kind of thing is good. Because even if you have fairly spiky traffic, say when your peak traffic is 30 times more than average traffic, that's still like 10 or 20 million visits per month that you could handle on a $5 a month server. So I was somewhat surprised uh, when I saw this in the Elixir forum. I, I think the episode last time may have uh, concerned a uh, newcomer to Elixir that uh, maybe Phoenix isn't that performant. So, I, I mean, first of all, I would say I, I'm running on a very cheap server, and it's actually not even the only site on the server. I have other ones, like StatWatch is running on the same server, and it's got... Uh, it actually, it, it has repeated tasks that it's doing, like I'm going out and logging stats on many, many different sites. Um, you know, there are several of my own that I'm keeping track of and several that are related to my sites I'm keeping track of. And I've also opened it up so other people are using this for free. Uh, it's, it's not as high traffic as Alchemist Camp is, but it's still, uh, you know, like, like that takes up memory on this very low end server. So... I didn't think this was bad, but I, but I think what stuck out was the amount of time for uh, a response to happen. I don't have this one open. Seven to seven and a half seconds, I think, was the single episode page. This is for all the episodes, and you can see um, it maxed out at 275 requests a second, and these response times still don't look good. I mean, it's like, you know, four and a half seconds. But this is not the time to render the page from the server. This is whatever time loader.io is reporting, and I'm not even sure where they're based. Um, 
They're, they may have a lot of traffic from other things, and they may be waiting for the entire page to load. So there, there are a lot of variables I'm not sure about, but what I am sure about is when I put more and more clients on it, at a certain point, those times will start slowing down, and then um, there will just be a lot of errors, and you know, I know about what the limit of a load the server can handle is. Now, obviously, there, there are all kinds of factors and how they might be running the test, but it's useful for me to know directionally if something I did improved things or not. Um, and, and obviously, uh, if this site were under a gigantic load, it might take longer than this to load up a page, or it might take longer than this to load up a single episode page. Um, it's obviously going to be YouTube and Discus taking the most time for the user. But um, all that aside, and there was a lot of discussion, or at least subjectively, it seemed like there was, uh, since I just put out this video and then all of a sudden these people were talking about it. I guess um, actually the OP ran a tool called Work against it and got pretty good results, actually. Um, not the episode pages, but the some of the pages just running with templates uh, compared fairly favorably to uh, his own site. Uh, this is 649 requests a second, then his own site, um, which is also running on DigitalOcean, also on a $5 uh, droplet using a static site, Jekyll. So uh, it looks, I mean, I actually, I guess, I guess it looks like Phoenix um, doesn't look too bad in the process. Just what looks bad is uh, the single episode speeds, which don't look great. And that makes sense because that's where I've got all my, my custom junk in there. So uh, yeah, don't, don't take this as uh, an example of an optimized site. This is more just a, uh, an actual site that I'm running and, um, how to set up some stuff with ETS. Now, um, I want to cover a couple of responses as to how I did it. Um, I got one suggestion of refreshing the cache list every time I add a new episode or update it. Uh, that was a really good catch. Uh, I, I did have to do that manually after the, uh, the video. And the other one was, did I try removing the cast call accessing ETS without serializing clients through the gen server inbox? Um, so I just used gen server to create the table and then do everything else directly with ETS. Strangely, I did try that and it made things a little bit slower. So let's address these one by one. Um, so this comment was talking about uh, not doing this, but instead inside this delete function, just directly doing this logic. And instead of serializing this, just doing the put logic directly inside of it and so on. For some reason that didn't make it any faster. The first commenter was saying I should delete the episodes cache because uh, I put the uh, the result of listing all the episodes under the key episodes, just that single atom. And uh, when I when I alter an episode or when I create an episode, I should delete that. So I, I added that in here. I, I delete the episodes cache uh, when creating or when updating or when deleting an episode so that the, the full listing is correct. That was pretty straightforward. And there's one other factor on this, the refresh the list cache when adding new episodes and updating. Um, I'm going to do that, but it's a little bit complicated because every time an episode is visited, there's a view count that goes up. So say I look at this using mix to modularize and add tests. 141 views. If I visit this page, then I go back to episodes, it should update that to 142 views, as you see here. But if we blow away the episode listing cache every single time any episode is viewed, there might as well not even be a cache. So we'd still be hitting the database every single time a listing is shown after an episode has been viewed and episodes are being viewed all the time. So I decided to take a middle of the road approach. So what we'll do is get rid of the cache once a minute. That way, if no one has visited the episodes page in a whole minute, we will have to hit the database, but once a minute is nothing. And if we're getting you know, hundreds of visits per second, well, that cache is you know, staying around for many, many thousands of visits before getting deleted. So the way we do this is note that this is a gen server. 
and I'll open up the application.ex as well, just so you can see where it's, it's added. So under the children, got this worker campsite cache. By adding this to the list of children, this cache is always started up when the application is. Now in init, I've added this function schedule work. That function is not written yet, so I'll write it right here. It's gonna be a private function and a very simple one. Schedule work, no arguments. And all we're gonna do is call process dot send after. Send after will tell a process to do something in a certain number of milliseconds after the current time. So the current the process is gonna be self and then the name of the task is going to be clear episodes and 60,000 milliseconds, aka 60 seconds or one minute. Then we gotta make a handle info for that. And it has to match this same atom of clear episodes and take state, which we're not gonna do anything with except just return it. Then inside of here, we'll call delete, which is the local function uh, defined inside of this file, and pass it the atom we want to delete, which is episodes. And that's just where we happen to be storing the episode listing. And then we'll schedule work again. So this will happen every 60 seconds. And no reply and state. So what happens when we initialize our app is the start link will get called, then we'll get into this init, uh, create our new table, then schedule work will run, which will send a message to self in 60 seconds to clear episodes. That will get caught by this handle info with clear episodes. And then we delete the episodes and then we schedule work again, which will do the same thing in another 60 seconds and on and on and on and on. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, you could obviously do some, some logic, like getting the current time and, and uh, schedule this at the same time every day or the same, you know, every, every minute on the minute. And there's also a module called Earl Cron if you really want to have all the functionality that, that Cron jobs do. But for most things, it's simple enough to do it yourself. And I should also point out, there could be a tiny bit of drift here because this will be scheduled for 60 seconds later, but you might be spending a microsecond or two uh, in the actual scheduler itself. And I can show you a previous implementation I did for the StatWatch project that I just showed you. I used to have it log exactly at midnight UTC every day. So I made a module attribute, which just basically has the, the number of milliseconds in a day, then same kind of schedule work happening in the init. Then inside schedule work, I would basically create a new time that's midnight, then calculate the number of milliseconds past midnight that it currently is by using time.diff and midnight in the current time. And then I calculated the number of milliseconds until the next midnight and did the process send after in that many milliseconds. And there, there are other reasons why I didn't stick with this. One being I don't want every single site that's being logged to try to do it at exactly the same time every day. But uh, this, you know, this is one thing you could do if you did want something to run once exactly at the same time every day. And as I said, check out Earl Cron if you need something really sophisticated. What I'd really be curious to hear about is how much performance do you expect, or, or even better, how much performance are you currently getting with a $5 a month DigitalOcean droplet, uh, say if you're running PHP or Node or Java right now? Have any of you gone to Loader.io and checked that out? And maybe even more importantly, how concerned should I be that pages such as this one can only handle about 200 requests per second? My thinking up until now has been that's completely fine because if I ever got to where peak traffic was even half of that, it would probably be you know easily over a million visits a month, 
And at that point, it wouldn't be too hard to justify going up to like a $10 a month uh, droplet or even 15. But on the other hand, maybe, uh, maybe there's something I'm not thinking about, like maybe uh, super viral traffic. I know this, uh, this site is totally fine when the occasional post gets up to the top of the Elixir subreddit. But if somehow a post got to the top of the overall Reddit, that's, that's pretty much impossible, but maybe, maybe Hacker News or something, um, who knows how much traffic that would send, and that might be a really bad time for, uh, for it to crash. So, um, yeah, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on that and where you fall on the spectrum of, you know, wanting to be ready for anything versus maybe just being ready for 10 times the traffic you already have. Thanks for listening, everyone, and see you next time.